I'm standing in a California reservoir. Where's the water? It's all the way down there. Shouldn't the water line come up to here? It used to. And that's the real issue. California has been experiencing a mega drought for the past 20 years. Don't we just need more thirst traps? What did you say? Don't we need to build more dams in order to trap water for thirsty people? That is not what you said. But to your point, the low reservoir levels are concerning. I'm here at Pine Flat Lake in the foothills of the Sierras, and as of right now, in September of 2022, the lake is at just 14% capacity. This is one of the lowest amongst the larger reservoirs in California. But isn't that just because there are more thirsty Californians? Stop using that word! Actually, California's population increase doesn't affect the reservoir levels like you might think. So then, it's because of less rainfall. Actually, there's more rainfall now in California than there was 70 years ago. What? But that statement I just made is incredibly misleading if you don't understand the data behind it. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the data behind California's precipitation and water consumption in order to better understand one of the biggest threats that California faces today. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. California has basically been in a drought for as long as I can remember growing up here. Californians are just too thirsty. Stop saying that. You're gonna get us in trouble with the algorithm. And actually, Californians don't consume that much water directly. Huh? California's water usage is broken down into environmental, agricultural, and urban use. Urban use is what we typically think of when we discuss conserving water, but farms and wildlife are actually bigger consumers. Statewide, California's water use is roughly 50% environmental, 40% agricultural, and 10% urban. So of all the water that is used by humans, 80% is used for farming and 20% is used directly by people in cities. This varies between dry years and wet years. In 2006, we had a wet year, with 62% going to the environment, 29% going to agriculture, culture and 8% going to urban use. In 2014, we had a dry year with 28% going to the environment, 61% going to agriculture, and 11% going to urban use. We essentially let more water go back to the environment in wet years than in dry years in order to preserve the water needed for farming. Urban use seems to vary with the year since we normally consume 10% of California's water regardless of whether it's a dry year or a wet year. Also, the total amount of water consumed by Californians has changed over time. Oh yeah, I'm sure we consume way more now that California has more people. Californians have gotten a lot better at conserving water over the last several decades. Per person water consumption has decreased between 1990 and 2015. In 1990, the average Californian consumed 231 gallons per day. In 2010, that number dropped to 180 gallons per day. And in 2015, due to drought-related conservation requirements, Californians only consumed 146 gallons per day. Much of this saving comes from using less water for landscaping. More crucially, California agriculture also conserves more water while still producing value harvests. Farm production generated 38% more gross state product between 1980 and 2015, even though farms consumed 14% less water. Farms generated more food with less water. We can see that from 1960 to 2015, urban water consumption hasn't really increased, nor has agricultural consumption. In fact, our total water consumption has actually decreased in the last 40 years. This is despite the fact that California's population has doubled over this time frame. So California has more people, but uses less water? That's right. Okay, so then we don't need as many thirst traps. I mean dams, we don't need to build as many dams. Sounds like the drought must be due to less rain. Actually, we technically get more rain now than we used to. If we look at California's statewide annual precipitation using an 11 year running average, we see that there hasn't really been a drastic change in California's precipitation over the last century. In fact, if we compare this to our overall average, we'll see that annual precipitation hasn't changed much in the last 40 years. But if we look at the percentage of precipitation as rain, we see that it has increased over the last 70 years, especially in the last decade. Wait, isn't rain precipitation? Yes, but so is snow. The percentage of precipitation as rain has increased because the percentage of precipitation as snow has decreased. The total amount of water falling from the sky hasn't really changed, but whether that water falls in liquid or solid form is what's changing. We are getting more rain because we're getting less snow. Wait, but isn't rain better than snow? You have to wait for snow to melt before you can drink it. Rain is water you can drink right now. It's not as simple as you might think. 
Each winter, the Sierra Nevadas get snow, which is stored in their snowpack. Then, in the drier months, that snow melts slowly, releasing fresh water into our rivers and reservoirs to be used by farms and cities. As the snowpack melts away, we run out of water until the next winter, when the mountains have their snowpack restocked with fresh snow. But if instead the Sierras just get rain, that rain will flow off the mountains more immediately. Then in the dry months, there isn't any snowpack to provide fresh water to our water supply. We lose all of the water right away after the rainfall flows off the mountains. The snowpack is critical to our water supply since it sort of acts like a natural reservoir, storing water for us during the dry months of the year. The cause of this decrease in snow could be due to the fact that temperatures in California have risen almost three degrees Fahrenheit in the last 20 years. Also, the future of our precipitation isn't looking good. The graphs I showed about annual precipitation are only an 11 year running average, and they only go to 2015. In seven of the last 10 years, we've had below average precipitation. And between 2012 and 2015, we had the driest consecutive four year period. So this is the worst drought ever. Well, not quite. This is the longest drought ever, but we have had worse years. 76 to 77 is generally accepted as the worst season in California. However, that was just one season, followed by a wet one in 77 and 78, and an even wetter one just a few years later in 82, 83. This current mega drought has meant that California has had below average water levels year after year for the last 20 years. If we look at Shasta Lake, California's largest reservoir, we see that the water capacity is low at the beginning of the season. Then as winter precipitation comes, the reservoir levels increase and then start to decrease in the summer months. We can see that this past season is definitely below the historical average. We can also see that the wettest season was above this average. However, the driest season was below all of these levels. If we look at Pine Flat Lake, the reservoir we're currently at, we see that it has even higher fluctuations in water capacity between summer and winter months. We again see that the levels for this past season are indeed below the historical average. We also see that the wettest season was above average. And again, the dry season is still a bit lower than our current season. But what's really interesting about Pine Flat Lake is that it actually varies in size quite a bit between summer and winter months. Its total volume of water in a typical year can vary by a factor of two. That's probably why I chose this lake, because it looks really low, even though that's just how this lake typically looks at this time of year. But wait, I've heard a lot about the Colorado River being in big trouble. That's a different watershed. What? Each river has its own watershed, or region of rainfall, that contributes to its water source. Colorado sources its water from streams and tributaries east of California. It's true that California uses water from the Colorado River. However, California reservoirs source most of their water supply from the Sierra Nevadas, whereas the Colorado sources most of its water supply from the Rocky Mountains. The Colorado River is in trouble, which is a problem for the whole Southwest, but we'll save that for a separate video. There are no easy solutions to California's water crisis. Most likely, we will have to consume less water and store more water. Remember that California's water usage over the last few decades has decreased as the population has increased, so it might actually be that we're able to save a lot more water than we think. California has also proposed building a new reservoir near Sites, California, which is scheduled to start construction in 2024 and be completed in 2030. This dam should add another half million acre feet of water to our reservoir system. Dams are the best thirst traps. No, a dam isn't a thirst trap. That is a thirst trap. Oh, damn.